The uh, next uh, presenter is uh, uh, Mr. Eden uh, McCarthy, and uh, he's from Microsoft. Um, he has got a uh, master in uh, learning technologies, and uh, he comes from a teaching family, and he has got uh, over uh, 20 years uh, experience, and he's in the final stages of his uh, PhD. So we wish him uh, well for getting his PhD as soon as possible. Please welcome him. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here today. One of the things that uh, Microsoft is doing at the moment is re-looking at how it approaches education. And, and one of the things that's very exciting for me is, is that you know, I'm a, setting up a brand new team that's really focusing on the teaching and learning. And part of that is to look at how this classroom setting or how this school setting fits into the whole concept of a city. And so today's presentation is sort of to give a flavour of where our direction is at the moment and how it's moving as well. I think if we think about, and it's 50 years I think from since JFK passed away, and he stated the goal of education is the advancement of knowledge and the dissemination of truth. And I'm sure he probably wouldn't have known the sort of change that we're seeing today the way we work, the way we live, and certainly the way we learn. So many of our students enter the classroom with digital savviness. But one great thing about it is that what we do know, and I think a lot of the questions that were just asked of before, is, is that while students know how to use technology, they may not know how to learn with technology. And that's where the role of the educator becomes so important in that process. You know, if we think about, you know, a child that's starting school today, they've got a backpack on. And if we think about all of the content of the world that exists today sits in that backpack, by the time they finish school, it's going to be at least 70 times in terms of 75 backpacks they're going to have to carry. And if we think about this person as they've, you know, got older, you know, by 2050, it's basically it's there at the the prime of their career. What sort of skills, expectations, knowledge would that of today be assisting them as they transition through? So we know there's significant trends. We've seen it yesterday, today, we've seen it in our day-to-day -day lives. Around, particularly for education, funding continually changes. Our populations change, particularly in how many students should be in a classroom how we manage technology, staffing, expectations around accommodation, what does a library look like? All of these things have got impact. The advances in technology and certainly, as I indicated, these sorts of skills that are required to make it successful today and for the years to come. We're also very much wrapped up at the moment in terms of our economy, whether it's here in the UAE or in every other country, we're going through significant change. Okay, what does our society going to look like in the next 20 or 30 years? Are we prepared for it? Are we resourcing it? And one thing that we can see globally at the moment is, is this re-energisation happening within the K-12, within the school area, and moving into universities as well to pr try and educate people with the best possible scenarios and skills to make them self-sufficient. We have this sort of interconnectedness now. And when we talk about that, it might be that learning is occurring through social media. How do we utilise that? How do we share that? In the last session, we talked a lot about security and those things came up as being issues as well, and safety. So when we start to think about these things, is that Microsoft recently launched a massive new program called Microsoft City Next. And when we think about that, in essence, what this is on about is, is that we know that our citizens, us, within our cities, are basically the power plants of energy of innovation. But it's our education system who are simply now the laboratories of, fu of the future, the people engines of our economies. So being creative, being innovative, okay, and a, bit, a very big skill that a lot of schools are starting to think about now is how do we build 
entrepreneurship within every one of our learning opportunities. I think there's you know, significant issues that we all face, whichever city that we're from and whichever country we're from. It's complex. Population issues, ageing issues. You know, one of the largest issues we have is the ageing teacher population. And what does that mean? How do we incent new teachers to become teachers? You know, at the introduction, you know, I'm one of you know, seven teachers within my family. And um, you know, some of us love teaching, you know, and others you know, have moved on to other things as well. But one thing that we do know, particularly if you're an educator, is that you can pretty well do anything, okay, because your skills are so wide and varied. But we're operating through significant technology megatrends. And this is so important in terms of understanding what we do within our schools and within our, in our universities. Mobility, and we're all now talking about, okay, whether it's tablet devices or whatever else we might have within our systems, how we leverage that. The social, okay, everything moving to a cloud where we can access all of our information at any point in time. And it's also about this concept of big data. And I'll talk a little bit about that in a few minutes. The advances in technology then is certainly the evolution of the user interface, being able to have access, touch, all of those sorts of things. But what is the role of the device? And if you think about that from a learning perspective, how important is it? The move to the cloud and then this concept of universal access. And I think what, you know, certainly in my career, you know, the, the very first computer lab that I ever managed in a school was a lab of Commodore 64 computers and uh, it took me about two days to work out what the password was but then eventually I got through. But now we're in a whole different world, a world whereby the access to apps or applications in very small chunks means that we can very quickly change the dynamics of what a learning experience can be. So when we think about this is that, you know, we could say 21st century learning or we could just simply say smart learning. So what is contemporary smart learning for students today? And as we consider that then, it's really around building out the blended formal and informal in learning environments. Digital content is obviously taking up in a very significant way. Whether it's student created, teacher created, publisher created, all of these are all coming together, but how do we go about effectively using and searching for that as well? Another key area is obviously the employability, preparing students for the workforce, okay, but it's also preparing for university. But these skills that are required need to be very flexible because we don't know okay, really what our society is going to look like in the next 10 to 20 years. And then the final area then is this personalisation. We've been talking about this for years and I think this is where this concept of City Next starts to come through is that every company at the moment is analysing their data. They're analysing it to the point, even this hotel I'm sure is analysing how many people okay, are coming through their doors every day, how long are they staying in the rooms for, how much are they eating at breakfast okay, or how much are we going to eat at lunch. They will have it down to the point where nothing is wasted but they can prepare and make sure they're supporting their customers coming through. The biggest issue in education is, is that we actually have more data than any other vertical. But the teacher who sits at the front of the room or the centre of the room or wherever they are, they have very little access to that data in real time. So it's very difficult to be personalised if we don't have that information in our fingertips. I think the other sort of key thing is, is really stepping back and thinking about what are the skills we require. All over the world there's 21st century skill frameworks. Again, there's a major piece of research, which is actually a bit of research that I'm using in terms of my studies. It's about really resetting what are the skills that we're thinking about and we look at this from a teacher perspective. So things like the ethical and emotional awareness, or it could be about life and job skills, or creativity and innovation. They're all skills we talk about. 
And I think there was a comment about you know, what should be in an RFP. Okay? In essence, a company like mine is, is that, well, if you gave me all of those okay, and asked me to come back, how are you going to do this with your technologies, that's actually a, probably a better question than we want a seven inch, we want this operating system, we want it to do X, Y, and Z. Okay? Because then now it's coming, it's for us to prove that this actually is a solution that could work for you. So when we think about City Next, education is a key piece because every student, okay, maybe has a sibling or has relatives and has parents or whatever, but we're all part of a digital economy. But we're also part of learning institutions that are facing significant challenges. And if we think about this is that, you know, when I look at it from a Microsoft perspective, is we're building our devices and services platform. Okay, before, you know, we were really very much focused on our software solutions, but now we're bringing in the devices in a significant way that's taking on all of these new trends that are coming through. We want to transform operations and infrastructure, engage our students in the learning community, and accelerate that innovation and opportunity and that's through all the different components. If I think about the UAE, the M government initiative that's currently out, where you'll be able to have access in the next two years on any device, okay, all that information should be taking in learning and education at the same time. So the smart learning okay, is really about integrating with best practices within all of government. And so one thing is that we do know is, is that, you know, Microsoft is very familiar to people, and so that helps. But more importantly, because of this device and services and solutions that go with that, it offers that broad set of circumstances. At Microsoft for Education, we believe an excellent education is a basic right and a social, economic and workforce imperative. Technology can economically accelerate insight and impact at scale. And I think one of the key things that we're really focusing on now is not just about those services, but as we go through these devices and the applications that go with that, particularly those that now sit on the different app stores, it's about how can we make learning more immersive, more productive. Finally, education is part of our community. It's about a collaboration. It's about ensuring, okay, that together we're advancing learning for all. Our vision is anywhere, anytime, learning for all. And it has been since 1995. It hasn't changed. What's really interesting now is that the devices is now at that point where this can really become a reality. So for us, it's about transforming education, supporting educators, inspiring students, and empowering schools and universities. And it's very much within that context of a city next, or a school next, or a university next. But one thing that we're very concerned about and very wanting to support is that the last thing we need is lots and lots of initiatives where suddenly a parachute of a device has been dropped into a school. And when we think about that, we need to ensure building in another you know, great research model from Colin and Mishra around technology, the TPAC, technology knowledge, pedagogy knowledge, and content knowledge all at the same time. Because so often we are fiscally tight in terms of the funding that we have, and so we end up focusing on one or the other. But we need to make sure that these things work very closely together in a very coordinated fashion. I'll just show you one little video that's currently in operation in Malaysia. Oh, sorry, I'll jump too quick there. Yep. Might be a slight dip to over time. Okay. It's not that yet. No, don't worry. There's no sound. Don't worry. We've got we haven't got time. No sound. Sound? Yeah. sound no, I don't know. 
Let's leave it. Apologies, people. So just in, um, in closing, um, I just wanted to take you through a few other sorts of scenarios. So when we think about transforming education from that perspective, some of the great things that we're doing at the moment is doing a lot of work around game-based learning, particularly around the Connect and Xbox. Many of you will start to see and already started to utilise things like the Office 365 and our one-to-one -one program initiatives. From an educator perspective, there is a lot of training, certification, leadership work that's actually occurring. Being part of the Innovative Teacher Program, the Educator Network, well, we'd love to see a lot of you in Spain for our global forum in March of next year. From a student perspective then, what we're really wanting is for them to be the next part of the City Next innovators and entrepreneurs. Them bring those skills so as our economies change, so do they. And so there's so many programs that are currently available for any school, from app development through to DigiGirls, the Imagine Cup in higher education, about best practice development of applications or other solutions. But one thing that we're also very aware of is, is that as we work with schools and education systems is that we need to make sure that the technology that we implement doesn't simply do what it used to do before but now with a computer. So many now are moving from textbooks to digital textbooks and that's okay. But if those textbooks don't start to integrate a lot higher order type thinking or activities that start to provide that technology to give us previously inconceivable tasks, then simply we're just substituting what we had from before. And so the engagement doesn't occur. The innovation doesn't occur. Part of that then is to redefine what is our assessment. And that might be that a student's going to create an amazing video or another student is going to create an amazing document. But either way, allowing that choice. The final part is around empowering schools and universities. And the key there is around the learning analytics. Among all of these other things, which is very much in the technical area, but it's bringing all of those great technical resources back to the teacher, back to the student. So to final, finalise then, you know, I'd like to thank you very much for the opportunity today. Is that one of the things that you know, we're committed to is to be a partner in that learning. And if we start to consider things like a City Next type approach, is bring in all of those resources that we have within the company, whether it's on the device, whether it's on the solutions, the services, or our global partner community, all of these now can start to come together. And I'm very fortunate to be part of a team that I'm building that's going to really help and focus on that ministries of education to help them in those areas that they really want to develop upon. So thank you very much. And if you need any opportunity to have a chat, then I'll be outside during the lunch break. Thank you. Perhaps we can take one question. Oh, Make it got, short, please. You've got the hard <laughs> questions. <laughs> See, that was very good, uh, actually, uh, lecture and presentation. Uh, very, very, very important for us. Therefore, this, this led me to, to uh, ask a question here. Uh, see, uh, 15 years ago, well, while in the West, in America as well, not in United States only, but in America, I mean, when you, uh, when people there uh, would say plug and play, in the Middle East, in Africa, in the GCC, we used to say plug and pray. Yes. <laughs> Because, uh, you know, uh, importing technology is, is not like implementing technology by direct people, the direct people on board or customer. Secondly, I would say, according to Nick, manager, ex-manager in the United States, when he say, once he said, education is to create theory, but practical practice is to implement them. So now, uh, under smart learning, 
Did you consider this element, what he said beautifully? Now, yes, education, education, education. In the end of the day, some country in the world, you'll find it with PhD, in fact, PhDs, but selling hummus. You know what I mean? Yes. Hummus, you know what hummus yes. means? Yes. And uh, maybe fever beans, green fever beans. So where, where this, this actually, I would wish, I wish say, important vision or vision when it comes to the PhD, master, bachelor's education, then now here comes to, uh, to implement the theory. Who will implement this th theory which really coined by these people, educated people, after all the SIDIC when it comes yeah. to the education? That is the question. Yeah, no, you, you raise, you know, you know, very important points. And, and I think one of the, the key areas is that the work with educators, okay, is still the critical number one thing to do. Is that we do know that students are very technically afraid. So there's no point in teachers teaching students how to use devices and software and everything else. We need to allow them to, you know, create, innovate, find out within themselves. You know, if I don't know how many, you know, people here have a child that's got an Xbox. How many of those children read a manual to use the Xbox? Okay, do you actually know whether there's a, next, there's a manual or not? And it, it's very much in that sort of vein whereby the key then is, is really being, bringing up the skills of teachers and educators to allow them to be able to provide greater and greater opportunities to allow that to come out from a student perspective. Teachers and educators still need to be able to manage the scope and sequence. They still need to know what the end goal is. But I think one of the um, critical things that is starting to occur in many countries now is, is that the reliance on a final exam at the very end that then justifies whether a student goes in one location or another, that is the area that's becoming fuzzier and fuzzier. Because what it is is that many teachers, whether at university or in, in the K-12 area, is that they're actually driving students to an outcome and that outcome may not be relevant to today or that moving forward as well. And so each Ministry of Education needs to also then free up the teacher time, change the focus, but also re-engage them. Because one thing we know about teachers is that, you know, give them the opportunity and the direction, they will, want, they will go with it very quickly. But if you put more activities on top of what they're already doing, then that's where they struggle. They don't know how to prioritise and it becomes a little bit, little bit messy in that way. And so when we looked at those sort of 21st century skills as an example, you could choose whatever that it might be. It's really thinking about when we talk about collaboration, what exactly do you want them to be able to do? Okay, and so part of that is re-engaging with educators, supporting them in a much more critical way, but I think there's also a reset in terms of university teacher preparation as well, as well as the expectations of what the final year of assessment should be as well. So assessment is driving behaviour. Beautiful. One minute. Just one. Only. Sorry. Can we continue at lunch? We have Because we are first. Just one minute. No, I thought I thought to say good. Oh, there is other question. Okay. We can outside. <laughs> Just make sure it's easy. These are all hard questions here. <laughs> okay. okay, all right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh,